Hey everyone, this is Oscar from Underdog and today let's talk about syncopation. What is it and why do you need it in your life? Okay, let's start with an example so you know immediately what we're talking about, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a straight groove with no syncopation. Then I'm going to show you an example of us adding an element that's not syncopated. And then I'm going to show you an example of us adding an element that is syncopated. So let's have a look at that. Let's start with a drum groove, a drum rhythm that has pretty much no syncopation like this. It's not a bad groove, I'm pretty happy with it, but it doesn't pull you in any particular rhythmical direction. It is basically a version of booms kits, booms kits. If you want to give a rhythm like that some love, watch last week's video about techno minimalism. However, let's say you want to program some more instruments over this straight groove. Where are you going to place the new elements and where are you going to place the accents? Imagine I add a few little hits of an Acid 303 synthesizer. And if I add them like this. bad example, right? You might realize intuitively that these acid notes are not actually contributing much to the rhythm because they are stressing beats that are already very stressed. Instead, let's add a syncopated rhythm instead. Quite simply, we replace this pattern with something like this and see how it blends in with the straight groove in a way that pulls in a more interesting way. Okay, remember, we're listening to the rhythm and the timing of this track, not so much the sound design. So what did we just do? I showed you a straight groove, then I showed you an example of a not very syncopated element, and then I showed you a counterexample of a syncopated element. So the pattern of these two acid lines was different, and one was more rhythmically interesting than the other. But why? Well, the answer is syncopation. And so what is syncopation? Well, syncopation is the stressing of weak beats in your song. It's a simple enough definition, but let's dig into it to really understand the implications and what that means. We made a little poster about this as well, just like last week. This is my brother Billy helping me out. Love you, dude. He's helping me make these diagrams that you can print off at home so you can have them on your wall ready to go whenever you want. There's a download link in the description. Okay, let's talk about terminology first. When people talk about rhythm theory, like the rhythm part of music theory, let's say, there are a few different words and a few different vocabulary sets that come up when you research this stuff. And to be honest, I don't find any of them completely satisfying for when I'm doing electronic music. So you're going to have to forgive me here today for using a little bit my own vocabulary because that's how I've learned myself over the years. This might not be exactly what you've learned in like classical music school. Okay. So I want to propose a system that matches the head nodding. Okay. When you count rhythm in electronic music or in techno or whatever, right? Notice where your head is naturally trying to nod, right? And that I'm going to call those moments the downbeats and the upbeats. I know there are a few different interpretations of what those words mean in different sets of music theory, but I guess this is closest to the idea of like in reggae where you have the upbeat, right? Where the upbeat is strummed on the guitar, not the downbeat. It's kind of the similar idea. So every time the kick happens in a typical boom, boom, right? Boom, 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 right? your head goes down. And so those moments are the down beats. And in between each down beat, there is the up beat, which is usually in this kind of a rhythm marked by a hi-hat. So you go boom, tss, boom, tss, boom, tss, boom, tss, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, right? So these are the most important musical moments in your one bar loop. But then as you might know, in electronic music, a lot happens at the level of the 1 16th note. And so if you open up a one bar loop in Ableton, very often what you'll do is you'll set your grid size to 116 because a lot of interesting stuff happens at that level. So imagine if in a one bar loop, we have 16 moments that we have to give a name to. We've already named eight of those moments. So there's the down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Then there's eight more moments in between those that I'm gonna call the weak 16th notes. So in my mind, when I'm doing rhythm, I think of the downbeats, the upbeats, and the weak 16ths in between. 
And if you're willing to follow me on that terminology, the next step is to talk about the relative strength of each of these beats. So when we're counting the, the beats that, I'm t that I was just describing, booms, 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 right? The boom is obviously, in my mind, obviously the strongest beat. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Maybe the first one is even more strong than the others. But let's call those four places where those kick drums are. Let's call those the strongest beats. Then the next level of hierarchy, I would say, is the place where the hi-hat sits. So boom, 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 boom. So let's say that the hi-hats still have some emphasis to them but it's slightly less emphasis than the kick drums. So on the strongest level, you've got the downbeats. On the next level, you've got the upbeats. And then the weakest beats in this loop, they're so weak that I don't even pronounce them usually, are the weak 16s. Those little moments are so weak that I don't even pronounce them, but they're there. They exist in your DAW, those moments exist. So if you draw up a hierarchy of the strength of the relative beats in this type of beat, you'll get something like this. Now, it's important to note that I am actually describing moments in time, not particular drum hits. I know I'm using the kick drum and the hi-hat as an example for this. However, even if one of these kicks is muted, that moment in time remains a downbeat. Your head is still going to nod, even if that kick is muted. So these moments are abstract moments. They're not synonymous to a particular drum. However, of course, there are some conventions or some cliches almost you could call them. For example, that the downbeat is most often marked by a kick drum or that the upbeat is most often marked by a hi-hat. But those two things are similar but not the same and the nuance is important. Cool, so my very basic beat that I've created goes boops, 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 boops. Very simple. The kick drums are obviously mixed to be the loudest and most impactful. The hi-hats are mixed to be slightly less impactful, but still very present. And then in between, there's still some things filling up those weak 16th notes, but at a less priority level than all the others. This results in a very straight groove that's absolutely fine, but has no syncopation in it. So then what was syncopation? Well, syncopation is when you take one of these weaker beats and you promote it to be more strong. So for example, you could take one of the hi-hats or one of the weak 16th and bump it up a level and say, this is now considered a stronger beat. We're going to emphasize it. And emphasizing a beat only means playing an instrument on it or playing that instrument louder at that moment. Literally anything to make that moment jump out in the composition. So if you look again at our acid synthesizer, one that has no syncopation, you can see that it's programmed to fall on the strongest beats that are already strong. We are not adding any interesting groove or any interesting rhythmical information to our loop because these moments are already accented, so why would we put more synthesizers on them, right? It doesn't add any danceability, doesn't add any tension to your groove. Instead, the alternate example, which quite simply just places them on an upbeat and a weak 16th, it immediately creates something that pulls a little bit against the main rhythm. It provides a second layer, a layer of groove, a layer of groovy tension, let's say. It creates a more interesting feeling for us to dance to. And in my mind, that's what we're going for here. We want a physical response to the music. If any of this is too advanced, by the way, check out my Foundations of Electronic Music course. It goes from absolute beginner to intermediate level producer. The concept of syncopation also helps explain why things like polymeters and Euclidean rhythms almost always add some kind of satisfying groove to a straight beat because they have a tendency to naturally fall on weak beats and therefore provide a counter tension to the straight groove. Now, an important word of caution here, right? When you start to think about building in complexity and adding complexity to your beats, remember to zoom out from your production in your brain and to listen like an audience member would and to try dancing to your own music. And check always that you can simply nod along to the music with your head and so that the syncopation doesn't overtake the straight groove to the point where it's not clear how people should be moving to your music. The idea is not to overwhelm people with just random hits on all the weak beats. You probably want to create a sort of a macro level groove where the global groove of your track all follows one rhythm that has some syncopation in it. So for instance, if you decide to prioritize a particular upbeat or something, consider that maybe several instruments might 
accents the same upbeat so that the global story stays consistent. Now take this concept of syncopation, put it in your little tool belt, implement it in your DAW no matter what DAW you're using, come show us on the Discord channel what you did with this, follow my own music projects Torque and Face the Sun on SoundCloud and Instagram. Like I said earlier, there's a Foundations of Electronic Music course if any of this went too fast for you or you want to learn in a more structured manner. Download the poster for this in the link below. And until next time, stay producing, be good to one another and take care. Bye-bye.